김민현 대표님. Hello. Can you hear well? Okay, I can hear you. Great. Let's start. Okay. Today's topic is a uh, generative AI and internet for AI. I call it AI network. So I'm from Common Computer. This is my company name. And here's my email, kimminhyun at comcom.ai. Feel free to contact me with any questions or further discussions. Uh, and you can always uh, ask questions using chat uh, during uh, the session. Also, I'm going to ask some uh, random question during the lecture, and you can freely uh, answer uh, using the chat box. A uh, quick introduction for myself. Uh, I'm a software engineer uh, natively. Uh, actually, I was uh, graduated from KAIST as a computer science major. Apparently, the name changed to School of Computing. In my era, we say computer science, but uh, I think the name fits better because computing oh. is not the only term for physical world. So, really, you yeah. you, you graduated <laughs> KAIST? Yes, <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, two thousand four is my okay. uh, my entrance date. Yeah, and. Right after graduation, I joined the Google uh, search team uh, for more than eight years. And there I learned distributed computing. Also, I learned machine learning. And I applied this knowledge to so-called user modeling. Uh, uh, this is a very interesting part. None of these terms were exist during my uh, college era. Uh, distributed computing, machine learning all came out after I joined Google and they taught a lot of knowledge in there, including TensorFlow, Framework, CoLab, and so on. And there I also really enjoyed joining Open Source Hackathon as a mentor and one of the initiative I led was a machine learning crash course. This is kind of the uh, first lecture from Google officially uh, using TensorFlow and Colab. So I, I believe everyone is using TensorFlow and Colab at least once if you are a computer science major, but uh, I was kind of the first uh, employee uh, it, it, it's more like a salesperson from my side uh, to distribute this framework to Korea. And then we uh, kind of enlarged this idea to bigger groups. Uh, one of them was a Jeju Machine Learning Code Camp. There we gathered the uh, masters and doctors from all over the world. And there were around 30 people joining in this camp for one month. Uh, developing machine learning. Uh, I also uh, very enjoyed the Google Impact Challenge, uh, which includes uh, not only technical perspective, but also the main major problems in the world uh, they are trying to solve. Uh, and then finally, I uh, founded Common Computer five years ago. And also this is the uh, start of the project so-called AI network. Okay, uh, then what's the common computer? Uh, this was a really hard topic for many years. Uh, five, especially five years ago, I said, I want to build an AI network and this is the internet for AI. And nobody understood. <laughs> And nobody uh, says this is an important topic. This is a, a hot words combining internet and AI, a very hot topic, but it sounds like scam 
like at that time ethereum was scam uh bitcoin was suspicious <laughs> so imagine that i joined the blockchain and ai work together they they that sounds like really really scam project uh but uh especially from this year now finally people understand they start using chat gpt and understand that this interface totally different and this is going to change the world uh, everyone who at least once used the chat gpt feels uh, can feel immediately that this is totally different game this is not the original internet and web3 will gonna change a lot and i'm gonna talk through uh, in this lecture uh excuse me can i add one more interesting story okay <laughs> uh actually back in 2018 when i founded my company groundex i met uh, minhyun uh, before he found his own company, he is preparing, he was preparing that company. So I persuaded him to join in my company <laughs> and work together. But uh, he thought uh, in the future, AI uh, can be combined with uh, blockchain uh, back in 2018. So, but nowadays it's very normal and it's common. So, he is of the pioneer in uh, two areas, AI and blockchain. All right. I remember that I visited uh, Jason's office and uh, Clayton's office was really small at the time. Like yes, five people right. were there and <laughs> it was a really fun period. Uh, and then after that, all, all kind of stuff happened. <laughs> uh -huh. And finally we are here. Yeah. And this is the video. Uh, I used to bring for, I think, more than Hello, two buddy. years already. Because you want? surprisingly, this GPT-3 was developed uh, almost two years ago. Uh, and this is not much different from ChatGPT, uh, architecturally or technically. Uh, uh, that means uh, this future was kind of obvious for engineers who are scientists uh, uh, and then this video was made from one of the uh, visionaries uh, to explain how gpt3 gonna change the world uh, one of the interesting part in this metaverse is that all these avatars are ais and only this person is a real person. And this avatar, creating this avatar, takes only five minutes. You can write a, a A4 size, 100, maybe less, just a few sentences. And then uh, these figures automatically shaped, like these uh, sunglasses or the uh, rough shape that uh, looks unfriendly and he's a very busy going to city hall and they're gonna talk really rude uh, to your question so uh, those settings are quickly made by a person who really don't know what's uh inside they they don't need to be engineer that if you can write you can create an ai and these all all other ais uh, are created really quickly. So making this type of metaverse, uh, it, it took less than a day uh, to be surrounded by AIs. Uh, where are you going? And then uh, this is my favorite part. They built this business model using avatar. And this is called hot dog man. And they sell uh, obviously hot dogs <laughs> and they have a chili hot dog sweet hot dog and no more hot dog and i think this is a very good uh use cases for nfts you can basically sell the hot dog nfts uh, by hot dog ai npcs uh, i'm gonna explain more uh, in the following slide Lesson one from the YouTube video uh, was that 
the interface we are talking about is totally different from web two. Uh, if you remember what was like web one, this was more like desktop uh, and the browser was the killer app uh, to present the internet for you. And then we got mobile phone in web two and cloud driven computing, social networks were really hot in web two area we are living in. And, and now we are facing the transition to web three and everyone is talking about metaverse, AI, decentralized data and edge computing. Uh, we don't have the final answer yet. There's a uh, uh, lots of debates going on regarding metaverse. Uh, 3D interface and avatars are really not, uh, uh, we are not living with them, but uh, we can actually, uh, at least to see that uh, this would be the part of the idea we are uh, going to face soon. And the lesson two from the video is that now we are uh, AI, developing AI is really, really easy. And this is totally different level easy. And in software 1.0, code written by humans, meaning developers write code. You need specific skill set, at least four year uh, hard work going on KAIST works uh, to be an engineer. Uh, and then you actually need a lot more uh, uh, materials to be uh, an AI engineer. But this is changed. And now if you input the data, code is generated. So it, this means uh, not only engineers, but also creators, uh, uh, open source participation is encouraged. And then random marketer, BD, everyone can uh, write a program using data. Uh, and we are uh, actually seeing this exponential growth uh, for example, there's a ChatGPT plugin uh, marketplace, and then there's already thousands of, thousands of apps are registered there. This is much, much faster than mobile app uh, deployment because they only need prompt engineering to generate the AI apps. And finally, AI BM. I like, I like hot dog man and the hot dogs NFTs could be sold. If you uh, have a right spot with the right intelligent, uh, intelligence can be a business. Uh, I brought this from some uh, very famous company and organized world information and made universally accessible and useful versus ensure that artificial general intelligence benefits the all of human humanity. Uh, can you guys uh, guess which company's mission it, it is? Google. <laughs> and the other one? OpenAI? Yes, OpenAI. <laughs> you can see this tone got really uh, kind of arrogant because uh, OpenAI haven't really developed general artificial intelligence yet, but they speak that uh, this is gonna endanger all of the hum humanity and they need to be a shield for defending us from the AI threats. Uh, you can see, uh, imagine how people are really seriously thinking about the AIs in this company. And, uh, let me check the chat box quickly. Okay. Uh, and you know the famous Elon Musk already told us and warned us that this is gonna destroy us like a nuclear power. And more and more people <laughs> agree with that idea although I'm not that uh, insightful as him, 
I'm not sure yet, but uh, I can also feel that lots of threats and dangers exist for this artificial general intelligence. Uh, let's quickly recap uh, the AI part. Uh, I, I wanted to make it as fast as possible because this is a Web3 class. Although I think the half of the Web3 are AI, but uh, I know this class is more focused on blockchain. So let's start with this pre-training. This is the time when I graduated KAIST. Uh, most of the people thought the use cases of AI is a problem solver. That means you, if you get the yes or no questions, you can make into a vector space. Uh, right now you, you have this uh, X and Y, but you can add as many as you want. You can have a 3D space, you can have a 4D space. If, if, if you at, even at that time, you could have a 1000 dimensional vector space to create a classification. So by uh, meaning of the classification is that you can divide this space uh, with the uh, one less dimensional uh, line because it is 2D space, you can divide this space using the line, which is one dimensional. If you have a three dimensional, you need a plane, two dimensional classifier. Uh, so uh, using this, uh, we could be able to identify cat or uh, dog or gorilla, human, and this was a really surprising time when we finally successfully dis were able to distinguish cat and dog. Everyone was shocked. At that time, someone, uh, some professor from university uh, developed uh, the deep learning architecture, so-called MNIST, and then this used uh, GPUs, and then they, uh, were able to process the pixel dimension uh, to dis discriminate uh, these two categories. That was the start of the uh, burst of the deep learning. And then we got Transformer 2017, and the title was uh, really uh, something. <laughs> Attention is all you need. And not surprisingly, this was from Google. And uh, so Google was a very famous company for dealing with languages. And actually, uh, this was not only the uh, great architecture, but it, it's actually a paradigm shift. So from this point of view, AI was a problem solver. But this point of view, AI is uh, first, uh, it has something called attention. And the second, it has some types of uh, storage uh, in it. Uh, I'm not talking about the hard disk or S SSD. Uh, this is more like a really, really small space inside architecture. And every transformer uh, that fits into GPU uh, has a small space to hold a token and weight. So from this time, uh, we thought this could be uh, act like a really smart database. I, I, I'm not saying database is a correct term, but uh, you can imagine that this is from Google and this uh, uh, Google has a really big uh, storage. Also, I, I don't want to call that storage, but Google has a really uh, large scale knowledge graph of the OD tokens already, all the knowledges and then they kind of shrink down to the GPU level. That's what I felt when, we, when I thought this transformer. And then the fine tuning concept uh, was a really hot after the BERT. And BERT is a kind of first model from the transformer. And then as you can see, uh, using small additional amount of data, you can now fine tune the model because uh, data, data for the base model was already large enough to know something. Uh, like they know the basic language structure already in the base model. And then you can add a slight more information to do different tasks. 
like question answering, sentiment analysis, classification, and name entity recognition, text summarization. This all, uh, what they were all, uh, uh, they passed all the SOTA tasks. SOTA means the state of art uh, tasks uh, using this one base model. That was the main key idea uh, that Bert, uh, Transformer delivered. And then uh, literally Transformer was all you need. And then more and more models, uh, it, it, it got bigger and bigger. And there's a uh, slight variations of this Transformer architecture. And you can see the right uh, bottom corner chat GPT finally came out. And model size uh, was uh, multiplied 10 times a year, which is really shocking because 10 times gross, 10x gross, it's uh, faster than startup gross. So <laughs> 10x is what we say uh, for the best case, right? But this research area was 10x uh, theoretically that means no, no, no company can follow this speed, even the startup. And I founded my company 2018 to solve this BERT problem. BERT size already, I thought this is too large. And I spent about, about uh, 50K to deal with this BERT model. And I thought this is a really, really big problem we are facing because I was kind of rich engineer. <laughs> and I thought uh, if myself is really spending this much money for the development and no one, no open source engineer, no students can join the AI ecosystem. And I wanted to solve that using AI network. And that's why I founded AI network uh, project at 2018. And then it got bigger and bigger. 10 times a year. And finally, we have a GPT-3 and ChatGPT. What's different from ChatGPT from the fine tuning model is that it doesn't require any more tuning. It just, uh, it just works with the uh, additional data. Uh, and they call it prompt engineering. And this is a really important step uh, for you to know because uh, Data used to be a uh, assistant to build the program. Uh, so what I mean by program is that program supposed to input the data and output the data, right? But right, right now data is uh, generating program and then program generates data and the data also generates program. What does it mean is that I, I already mentioned that human, all, all human who can write a data can write a program at this point, but not only a human, anything, anything that can write a data can write another program. That's what is happening now. And there are only researches and papers going on that AI generates another AI and it works. <laughs> it's very scary, right? And this is called prompt engineering. Basically you can add data and then they adapt to these different tasks. And then one of the tasks they have is to generate another adaptation. And the final, uh, uh, this is a kind of final, uh, the last uh, theoretical knowledge unit, uh, it's called the diffusion models. Uh, what you can see from the bottom is that you, uh, even the people uh, who doesn't have a, any idea what's going on here can immediately see that this is much simpler than the above, <laughs> right? Yeah. So there's a saying that simple things scale, simple things scale. Uh, remember that simple things scale. And transformer was a really the fundamental simplest architecture that could scale 10x a year. And this is also the, in image area, this simple architecture can scale. Uh, so what it does is that this, it starts from original image 
and it goes to the noise. It just add noise, 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 slightly, slightly more noise. And then finally you cannot recognize the image. And basically this model, this large model has the all the paths from real image to the noise. That means it also has the reverse path from the noise to the real image. So you can transform from cat to dog because at sometimes it looks like animal, not, not like cat, not like dog, uh, and it meets in the middle ground. So this means that you can uh, generate arbitrary, ar arbitrary image from any situation, any noise-like situation, you can create something out of it. And you can also add prompt control uh, additionally here. So this is a really, really a rough architecture, how it works. There's a diffusion going on here. And then there's an encoder pixel space, you put input and you say, uh, I want to transform this dog to cat. Then it understand the uh, sequence of a uh, uh, con conditioning and then it applied to this diffusion architecture and then it, this dog becomes cat. Uh, you can uh, do a lot more than that. Like you can zoom in forever. I want to see this eye. I want to, and then this will gonna generate images for the details. And you can zoom in forever and can, you can zoom out forever. If you want to see the, uh, like where where is this dog? Then it could generate the house. Uh, where's this house? It can generate the world. And then it could generate the universe basically. So that's how powerful this diffusion model is. And I think uh, for you Web3 project, uh, you might not uh, be able to process the metaverse project yet because uh, your knowledge on smart contract blockchain was kind of limited by the program. Uh, smart contract is very, very uh, like rudimentary program that only developer can write, right? But using this kind of a deep learning architecture, you can control the situation using text, and then you can generate metaverse you want. You can generate the chatbots you want using this prompt, and then that could be finally transformed into some types of a smart contract. Uh, that's uh, where the developer comes in. And as uh, one of the different ecosystem this stable diffusion has, uh, not like ChatGPT. ChatGPT was wasn't uh, open sourced from the beginning, and they still figuring out how to open source it. But Stable Diffusion started from the open source, and this is the ninety days uh, star of the Stable Diffusion. Uh, its growth is uh, really crazy. Uh, in the history, there's no project like this. Even the Ethereum stars graph was like this, one of the greatest projects in history, like Bitcoin or Kafka, Spark, all didn't have a star growth like this. And it is, it, it's a totally different game now. Uh, anyone can download this model and contribute to GitHub. Uh, this is caused by not only developers, but also everyone can join this ecosystem. And this is a realistic uh, community, <laughs> the stable division uh, used. Uh, these people, apparently they are not developer. <laughs> they are figuring out how to generate their girlfriend. They have something they want, <laughs> very specific needs and all are different. And they want to, this is uh, literally saying he's gonna dig into this model, wait, until they get the answer. They have a, uh, like, they want to have a beautiful eye. They want to have a, this, uh, I want. I don't want to talk it of, about it, but uh, yeah, this, this nine, nine, 19 or uh, 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 something. And <laughs> yeah. So this is the kind of power of community. And 
uh, A16Z, one of the, the top uh, uh, VCs, uh, very quickly identified this market and created this sector in the beginning of this year. And they already found uh, 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 good companies in each uh, area and divided into these categories, games, graphics, characters, audio, uh, they're gonna have a all generative AI inside. So now we say Web3 is was read, write, own. I think you are familiar with the read, write, own concept. Uh, so own is from blockchain, right? And now we need to add generate. Read, write, generate, own is the uh, final answer for Web3. Uh, at least for from this year, <laughs> this is keep changing, right? <laughs> but uh, people are saying that blockchain wasn't the final answer. Uh, ChatGPT was the final answer, and now we can imagine how Web three works. And this term AI NFT, this is the term I uh, contributed or suggested. I think the word first. Uh, I wrote the blog, how an AI NFT should work. Uh, and unfortunately, I couldn't write a paper. So if you search for AI NFT from Google, you can find my articles, uh, blog articles, but you cannot find any of AI NFT uh, paper. But the difference between Web2, left is Web2 Scholar, Google Scholar, and the right is Web3. ChatGPT. The difference between that is that they generate answers for AI NFT. Somebody can argue that this is a wrong answer because it wasn't uh, exist. But I I could argue that this exists now because he he it it generated this uh, paper. If you want to know the details of the, like this person was generated, I want to know this person, you can click it and then it will gonna generate another persona or profile of this person. And then right uh, at the moment you click something, you search something, information comes out. That's the difference between generative web and the uh, original web. So Google's mission was really large, organized world information, but what was hidden in that mission was the organized existing information created by human was what we thought uh, it's, it's going to change the web. And then now uh, ChatGPT suggests that, oh, there's some more information inside my model. Foundation model is full of ideas, now it's a game that you retrieved information from already made weights. And it knows more information than web because literally we put all the web data inside. It was about 80 terabyte, uh, all the web texts already in there and ChatGPT already figured out how to compose different information. And that's how it generated the AI NFT concept. So we can say that uh, there was a time we searched by keyword and then somewhere uh, Google suggests the keywords at the same time you just uh, uh, put the cursor in the search box, it just suggests what you want. And we called uh, internally, we call the zero search. Uh, and then even before you put the cursor in, we sent notification and we, we call the predictive search. So we know what, what we'll, we, you will do even before you know what we, you will do. Uh, that's kind of statistically proven inside the Google. But now we can have a, another uh, uh, idea that generative search. We can write our information uh, even before you predict it uh, and even if there's no information for that, uh, if we can just write it. Uh, that's called generative search. And uh, for this type of word, 
what blockchain comes in uh, is the term called autonomous. Autonomous. Auto, auto, everyone knows auto, right? Manual, auto uh, means uh, this is a term used for uh, us. We are autonomous intelligence by definition. Uh, we are not owned by anyone uh, when we are born. Uh, no one can change our thoughts from cloud. <laughs> Does anyone have a chip inside the brain that can, <laughs> not yet, right? But although Elon Musk is looking for it, but not yet, no one has the chip inside our brain. Our brain is ours and only uh, action that changes the brain is the consumption of data we see where we hear that's we call autonomous. So we feel that this world uh, from the Web3 owned AI is very unnatural. I call it unnatural. Uh, let's say ChatGPT owned by OpenAI, Siri owned by Apple, Bixby owned, owned by Samsung, and what is the Google's one? Uh, I don't even remember. Okay, Google <laughs> owned by Google and Tesla car owned by Tesla. And this is very unnatural for intelligence because we don't own intelligence. Intelligence just exists uh, with the data. Uh, if you see this kind of a robot uh, vacuum cleaner, this dog thought this program is autonomous. And he thought this is not a machine. This is something that he uh, curious and something that he want to know uh, whether it is gonna hurt my master or whether it is gonna be cuter than me, then it's gonna be really serious problem, right? They, they're gonna feed it more than me. So uh, this is how we see the AI. Uh, if you feel something is more intelligent than us, you immediately feel that this is something, even though it's a machine, uh, you feel like this is autonomous. And uh, surprisingly, we have the technology that can make autonomous program, uh, which is a blockchain. Uh, so blockchain is the internet computer. And this is, uh, by definition, uh, state machine managed by the uh, group of computers publicly. Uh, I, I, I believe this is a recap for you because you already knew the uh, how Ethereum works. Uh, so basically Ethereum is a very small, uh, but very secure state machine, very slow but it's managed by uh, thousands of computers. So this uh, state transition is broadcasted to all the computers. And if you have uh, $10 for each account and there's a transaction that changes this state. And then what is important in this state transition is that only the uh, account, this form field, can sign this transaction. That means state is managed outside of this world. This is a really, really important concept. What makes the program autonomous is this signature. And I saw lots of people complaining that wallet is not user-friendly, but the, you must know that this is a core concept of Web3. You need to be able to own your data by protocol. No one can touch your data without private key. That's the core of philosophy of the blockchain. And this is actually a lot in, more important, in my opinion, a lot more important than blockchain itself. So blockchain is kind of nothing. It's, this is that's the database, right? Block and chain. But this owned uh, private key concept uh, is really important for uh, 
constituting autonomous AI and autonomous program. program. So, so now you have an externally owned account that only you are able to change the state. And then Vitalik was kind of genius that suggests, hey, there could be a program that could change the state. And that program could be owned by human, but at the same time, that could be owned by no one. If you just remove this only owner field, that means you can make an ownerless program. That's the uh, how they form the DeFi programs, right? Okay, so DeFi program is a really small program that can run by itself and couldn't be stopped by anyone. Uh, is there anyone who can stop Uniswap uh, with you, your private key? There's no one. That's how secure it is. Uh, also, uh, this destroy function, uh, if there's the only owner field for this function, only the owner can destroy this contract. But if there's a no destroy for this contract, then it this contract becomes immortal. Uh, so mortal means you can die, but immortal means you cannot die. The program cannot die. Uh, this means this program will live longer than human, longer than any corporation. And if this program can earn slight amount of money uh, sustainably, this will gonna eventually exceed the any human uh, assets because uh, they can live forever. They are, their time frame is different from human, right? And then you can apply this to AI. Oh, this is a big jump, but you can at least imagine how it looked like. Uh, imagine that autonomous uh, driving is not owned by Tesla. It's owned by a uh, small contract. <laughs> I, I don't know how to call it. I, I, let's say there's something called, I think uh, it could be a different protocol, but let's just say smart contract owns this car. Uh, so this car just lives on the street and no one can destroy this car. Uh, physically you can, but no one can software uh, uh, unless you have a private key, you cannot change how this drives. And then uh, this can go to like a gas station and gas station could be also the smart contract. Uh, and then it fixes by itself. It could go to some repair shop uh, and it could uh, use their earnings to uh, grow their intelligence uh, using the pipeline it attached. Uh, which is what AI networks is doing. And then it gets smarter and smarter and it earns more money. And maybe someday it it exists not only on the street, it, it could fly, it could have a different parts. And then it just like birds or dogs uh, uh, evolve, this uh, program could evolve autonomously. Uh, this is the movie called War E. Uh, in this movie, this uh, cute uh, robot was the uh, was left, and all the all the other human went to uh, I I don't remember maybe they went to Mars because Earth is uh, not uh, suitable for them. But this autonomous AI just uh, cleans the Earth forever. That's uh, how the concept of autonomous AI is different from owned AI. Okay, uh, by the way, any questions so far? Because uh, there's uh, another topic coming in. If you have a question, I can recap this presentation and then go to a different topic which is the details of how we can accomplish this autonomous AI.
just checking it works <laughs> i can wait uh, maybe one or two minutes and then i can move on There is no question, so I will ask. Mm, I think you will uh, address later. Uh, I think uh, current solidity, current smart contract system is not flexible. So uh, if AI will own, uh, own our private key, mm -hmm. so AI can be a delegate of ours, Mm -hmm. So they can control smart contract. Mm -hmm. And then if something bad happened, mm -hmm. how can we fix it? Because smart contract is not flexible. So it is not easy to update or... So if AI reject, mm -hmm. reject us because AI is the owner, Mm. of that smart contract right so let's let's put let's uh take out a what if the intelligence like human do the same thing uh let's say he's a developer and he refused to fix it because uh, he's all uh, he every human is autonomous uh intelligence what what do you do so in this case, we uh, make we uh, improve the system with uh, more people. So yeah. multi sig <laughs> So some make consensus. <laughs> right. So we prohibit one person can control something important. Right. So we call it uh, maybe politics or government governance. That's right. So yeah, in conclusion, I think eventually we need AI governance. <laughs> it's because uh, uh, every intelligence has uh, would have a purpose that might not be understandable by human. And if they have a uh, autonomous controls and they need to figure out by themselves uh, uh, using different intelligence fight together to defeat the some error. So this is a hard to define what is error, right? Uh, if you have a different level of intelligence. From human perspective, it might look like error, but from AI uh, perspective, it could be progress or in the <laughs> middle of something. <laughs> Very yeah. radical. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's move on to the next slide. Okay. Uh, can you see my screen as a full screen or can you see this as a, with a browser? Uh, with a browser. Uh, okay, I'm gonna change the setting. Okay. Okay. So the internet for AI, it's really easy if you understand what is the internet and what is AI. But the internet is something really tough to understand. Uh, this is my question. What is the internet? Would you type that in to chat box? Anyone? I'm gonna I I'll go, I'm not gonna move to the next slide because uh, I think everyone can answer something about this. <laughs> oh, communication network. 
connection, connection, be connection, connection of knowledge. Mm. Is there any definition uh, from computer scientist perspective? Theoretical uh, definition? Okay, so I think those are really great answers. Uh, apparently, uh, you guys are really sentimental about the internet. Uh, but technically, the internet is a connection of the computers. So one more than one computers connected publicly, we call it internet. And the reason why uh, uh, you got so sentimental was that we are living on the applications of the internet. Uh, so like communications of the humans and the connections, those are the byproducts that we, uh, by having the connection of computers. And the killer protocol of the internet is web. And this was so successful that most people thought web equals the internet, but uh, no, the internet is a bigger concept. If you just connect the computer, there's internet, and then web is the connection of documents on top of the internet. That's the definition of World Wide Web that Tim Berners-Lee suggested. So on top of the connection of the computers, the first thing you need is to define the software layer that how you're gonna connect the computers. And apparently there's an infrastructure protocol, TCP IP and ethernet token ring and so on. And TCP IP was also the hero of the disconnection and there's of course UDP, but TCP is the more famous. And we call it TCP IP protocol suite. Uh, this was a foundation of the web one and web two. And this transport layer uh, was uh, really uh, good for connecting document. Uh, but if you uh, go into further, this is not the only way to connect the computer, for example. And my favorite question when, when I was in Google, a uh, favorite coding interview question was that define the connection protocol between moon and earth. And then you need to change everything. You cannot communicate within one second. You at least need a few minutes. If you are going to Mars, the problem gets serious. And then you need to take it account whether the Mars is uh, near us or away from us. If your Mars is uh, farthest away from us, this is a really, really big problem. No protocol can uh, manage the connection between Mars and Earth. And TCP IP is useless in this condition. Uh, if you use TCP IP for this connection, you send the one packet, wait for one minute, <laughs> and then wait, send another packet, wait for one minute, and you're gonna take forever. Uh, and the connection will be really erroneous. And then most of the packets will be dropped and you cannot establish HTTP. That means you cannot use Google in the moon or Mars. That's why TCP IP protocol is really powerful in our world. It connected the world, but it connected the world before Elon Musk, because Elon Musk wants to go to Mars and they're going to need a whole lot different protocol and a whole lot different internet. And this is a good lesson for a computer scientist or a computer science major, because the computer science is about software. And internet is software. 
something you can change. You can write a code, you can propose how it works. And this was developed by legacy engineers, one of the greatest engineers. And they developed this type of protocol to connect the US and the Asia. That was their problem. But now our age, the problem is connecting, how to connect the moon, how to connect the Mars. That's our, the pro that's our problem. And the additional problem we are facing is that how to define state layer and computation layer. Uh, so Ethereum kind of solved this uh, in a toy way, though they have a state layer that could be agreed by everyone. Everyone in, on the internet can agree on something. We call it common state layer. And we can have the computation on top of the everyone agreed states. That's called the world computer. World the slow, slowest computer because everyone has to agree. And that's how they define the first protocol for state layer and computation layer. Apparently, this will not gonna work for AIs and other programs other than DeFi, because the finance is the one of the area that everyone needs to be agreed. Money is important, right? So everyone has to wait, and everyone is willing to wait to process the numbers processed. But you don't need to be wait to your like uh, action to propagate all the world. And even Twitter don't do that. When you retweet it states of the world, every, every user sees different states. When you search, the search result is different from US, different from Korea, not because the database uh, is different, but because the sync, uh, synchronous protocol doesn't work for Google scale. So every user sees different states. It's how the current uh, web services work. So AI network is kind of a state machine that reflects that different design that uh, there could be a multiple states. First, we need to admit that and we need to figure out how to manage multiple states. And Ethereum has uh, their roadmap. They want to build a one state machine and scale one, scale two, uh, layer one, layer two, all looks for the one, states, scaling one state. That's their main pro problem. They're gonna solve it for a while, maybe for more than 10 years. They have a ZK layer and, and so on. That's what they, their problem is. AI networks problem is different. We are not dealing with financial data, for example. We are not interested in what Ethereum is solving. What we are interested in is that how to manage asynchronous state updates on the internet. That's what AI network is solving. And the other computation problem we are solving is that uh, Ethereum solved this uh, into, uh, from the virtual machine level. But if you take a look at uh, recent decentralized computing, uh, we are not running program line by line. We are running the program using so-called a container. This is technology that Google developed. They have a Borg, and this package system, and they open sourced it into Kubernetes. Uh, they have a billions of containers contain, uh, connected to constitute one program, uh, one software, which is search. So when you type something, billions of containers, small software interact with each other to answer. And this, this, they don't run the code right line by line different computers uh, run the container, maybe multiple containers run on single machine, maybe a multiple machine run one container. So this is uh, how they abstract the uh, ap application connections. And uh, this is something we need uh, to contain. Uh, TensorFlow, for example. TensorFlow is a framework and you can run TensorFlow on EVM. Maybe it, it's not, it, it's just natively not possible. You cannot uh, write a TensorFlow code using uh, EVM solidity. <laughs> it's, it's impossible because it's a language is based on, for example, the CUDA library and the, it's highly dependent on 
the how GPU instruction works. And they they are not run on virtual machine level, they run on container level. So we say that uh, Ethereum is a connection of programs and we say uh, AI network is a connection of a container. Uh, it solves the bigger computation problem. I'm not saying this is better. I'm, I'm saying, I'm just saying this is a different design principle. Uh, so virt running virtual machine and running container totally requires different design. And what it works is this way. Uh, you remember the video I showed, there are trees and buildings, uh, static objects could be NFTs, NFT hot dog. Those could run on Ethereum with a single state machine. And the others like the AI MPC, uh, talking or the bars or uh, driver driving cars. Uh, those are uh, something that requires uh, multiple states and they could run on AI network. And we can define dynamically changing NFTs using AI NFT. This is something I wrote uh, using AI network protocol definition. And then we can run the application layer on top of it and so that we can surround it by AIs. And then all AIs have uh, some kind of a registration number, just like we have a Jumin Deng Lokjeng, AI could have a AI NFT. And what we do, uh, we did, what we did was we tokenize the GPUs and we tokenize to how to govern these GPUs using INDAO NFTs. And the members of uh, uh, INDAO can decide where to use these GPUs. And one of the use cases could be running the large models that I talked about in the beginning uh, gen to run the generative AI. And the, we tokenize the AI, the output of the large model into AI NFTs so that we can build a marketplace, just like OpenSea, we can uh, exchange these AI entities on the uh, marketplace. And then we connect all of them using AIN token. So everything's ready. Uh, and I'm not saying oh, everything is perfectly ready, but at least we have something for each field. We have a GPU, uh, we can collectively, uh, 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 from the anonymous people, from the internet, we can collect GPUs. We can run large model on top of the anonymous, anonymous GPUs. And then we can run the AI NFTs, uh, meaning we can give uh, this ownership of the AIs to arbitrary people. And we can make a marketplace to transfer the ownership of the AI, which is the core concept of the autonomous AI. Uh, our status uh, is not uh, really big, but it's not small either. So 45, 405, 50 GPUs are on our network so far. This is uh, uh, less than Kakao, our neighbor, but uh, uh, much bigger than normal startup has. Uh, this was possible by our AI network ecosystem. And we executed uh, 300 GPUs to Aintao, and we used those GPUs to develop large models. And then creators, developers use this uh, to for the prompt engineering. And we built this uh, metaverse and the marketplace. And we also have the gallery uh, that could present the AI arts using these AI large models. Yeah, so this is the final slide I have. So in the future, uh, remember that we are gonna be surrounded by AIs and maybe one people could surrounded by tens or hundreds of AIs and that we're gonna have uh, 주민등록증, which is AI and FT. Yeah, that's my conclusion. Okay, thank you for listening. Now I can uh, do the Q&A for my presentation.
Yes, we define DAO as autonomous, so AI can solve this much more automatically. Yes, I agree that uh, Vitalik suggested that the program can uh, run the organization. And that's what A stands for, right? Uh, instead of CEO, CFO, they are dumb, <laughs> basically. <laughs> Uh, I'm the CEO, but uh, my capacity is very limited. And my decision sometimes not really good for in a large scale. So you, if you make that into program, you can live in more systematic world. That's what Tao says. And then what AI can add value to that is that you can run the more sophisticated program can govern you. So the difference between the robots and the AI is that AI is autonomous. So what we thought uh, currently AI like ChatGPT is actually a robot. They run for us, but because uh, we are Web3 generation, we should say AI should uh, at least coexist with human. So we work for them and they work for us. They, that's how the DAO and artificial autonomous intelligence works. And I'd like to more about AI NFT. Hasn't the NFT auto-generated program been deployed yet? Yeah, so I first published the world first AI NFT using GPT-2, uh, 2020. Uh, that's, that thing that's kind of the first AI NFT working. Uh, and then from there, uh, Right now, many projects are talking about AI NFTs. Uh, you can easily find uh, uh, many, I call it scam projects, <laughs> as you say, AI in NFTs. Uh, Auto-generated program been deployed yet? You can partly see this future, uh, like NFT generation, it's a lot faster. Uh, if you take a look at OpenSea, lots of images are generated image already. Uh, so that's kind of the first start. They start from the static images, and then they are now looking for videos. You know, the TikTok or YouTube shorts are really uh, uh, addictive, addictive. So they can change the human behavior, and then they can uh, or write another contents that, that changes a uh, human. So yeah, I think we are in the middle of something. Uh, and we have a semi-auto-generated program, uh, but not, not fully auto-generated program. Uh, there's a one paper that has a auto, autonomous metaverse. All of the entities in that metaverse is uh, GPT-3 AIs and they just live forever in that metaverse. There's a one paper out of Google, yeah. Any other question? Okay. Oh. AI model is trained off chain and then the uh, ownership of that, uh, I call it schema of the pipeline uh, is managed on chain. But uh, if you uh, see this in the bigger picture, on chain and off chain is kind of a interim world. So by on-chain, you are already assuming there's a one single state machine to agree on. But I uh, suggested that internet will not look like that. Web3 will not look like, look like that. There's a, that's the a myth that internet is consists of uh, one state. It's, it's not, work, uh, if you go to moon, it's go to, if you go to Mars, it doesn't work like that. And even now, uh, game, Twitter, Instagram, no software agrees on one state. One word state is myth. And then you need to change the definition of states management. And then 
you're gonna forget this concept on chain off chain it is not gonna be really important it will gonna look like graph uh several states are intermingled and interprotocol maybe cosmos is more suitable for uh interconnected blockchain that's a kind of a rudimentary concept but uh yeah you need to see uh more from from now on ethereum is not the answer it's uh, only the beginning you need to develop more okay time's up so thank you for the great uh uh seminar and uh give him a round of applause 감사합니다 대표님 네 감사합니다 나가보겠습니다 네. 네. we will have a 10 minutes break